Now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Gasford. A month after flooding took out businesses in downtown Montpelier, Vermont's capital city still looks like a ghost town. Shops closed, debris scattered, and fans blowing. At this point on the road to recovery, business owners tell us they're tired and looking for direction. Our Lucy Kale joins us live in the studio now. Lucy, you were there today. What did you see? Christina, a lot of businesses in downtown Montpelier remain closed. Langdon Street Tavern is no exception. The owner says he's been working every day to get the place back open, but it's taxing. Airing out to get back in. I thought we could replace it all in a week and be up and running again, but that wasn't the case. Uh, we had to replace all the floors, uh, walls, basically everything, and that takes time. One month after flooding devastated Montpelier's downtown area, business owner David Thomas says he's in the waiting game now. We're waiting on contractors to come in and get the work done. It's kind of out of our hands at the moment. He opened Langdon Street Tavern in 2017 and says it's a special place to come together, relax, and enjoy some drinks and food. Hard to be patient with because, you know, we want to get back open and running again. You know, all our employees, like, they're our biggest concern right now because they want to work. They have bills to pay, they have rent, they have kids to take care of, and they can't do it without a job right now. As cleanup continues, businesses say it's still unclear when they can finally reopen their doors and get the all clear from the Vermont Health Department. However, we haven't had too much guidance on that. We've had some, you know, we're getting documents sent to us. This is your, what you need to reopen. Here are your guidelines for that, but we're not seeing them technically, like, on a day-to-day -day basis of face-to-face -face talking as much as I feel like we should have, but I haven't seen it yet. The health department says they provided guidance to businesses directly after the flooding. They say they've been trying to help the areas who need it most. The public health inspectors have also been available um, as a technical resource to businesses for questions. Um, and if people are unsure about how to safely reopen, um, they are available. Um, to visit their establishments and answer questions also by phone or Zoom calls, for example. The department says some businesses will have less extensive damage than others. In those situations, they can do self-inspections, whereas others need more hands-on help. The businesses uh, know their situation best, so the guidance is available for really making an assessment for what might be needed for their particular situation. This type of uh, situation gives you an opportunity to try to make some changes, do some updates that, you know, you otherwise might not have had an opportunity to do, so. For Langdon Street Tavern, the extent of damage means the waiting game continues. And going forward, now we're kind of at a standpoint, as you can see in here, everything is stripped down to the bare bones, and now we're just trying to figure out the best way to build it back and in, in a, as fast as possible, really, for us. Thomas says the state has helped his employees pay for bills during the closure through the disaster relief fund, but the money only goes so far and people have to start thinking about other places they might have to work. He says he hopes the waiting is over soon so he and his employees can get back to work serving the community. Christina. Lucy, thank you.